get started in a sec. Okay. Joining me now is Kelly Keegy of Night Ranger. They have a new album available August 6th, ATBPO, which stands for And the Band Played On. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. I really hey, appreciate thanks it. For, uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So Night Ranger is one of those bands that, uh, you know, anybody who casually follows rock these days knows that you guys are always out there on the road playing a lot of shows every year, uh, you know, even 35 years in. How did you and the rest of the guys handle this pandemic where you were not able to go out and play shows? Well, um, we we uh, actually used it as a as a. Uh a reason to make a record. We didn't have it slated uh, in the schedule to make a record at all. So um, what we did is we just switched gears. And um, I mean, it was frustrating because we could not get in the room together. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't jam these songs out or write the songs together. So it was all like, we'd get on Zoom calls, we would get on phone calls, we would record ideas into cell phones, send them over the internet, and it just like it was just this long process of like, what do you think of this idea? And it just slowly we had a couple songs and four songs and five and you know and and it uh, and we use utilized the time to make a a record and knowing we were going to need a lot of time, you know, with the way we were doing it. So yeah, that's what we did. Yeah. At what point now, when you guys are ready to actually like record it and you've worked everything out, do you get into studio at that point or is it actually the, the final recording is still done like, Oh, you know, via zoom or, or something similar to that. The, the final recordings were done uh, at everybody's houses. So they, once we decided on what the parts were going to be and yeah. how that was going to work, I went into a studio here in Mesa, Arizona, uh, with, uh, at uh, Ken Mary's studio, he's a he's a guy that played with Alice Cooper and he played sure. with House of Lords and he's a great guy and great engineer and so I I took my drum set over there and recorded him. Um, everybody else, Pro Tools, you know, everybody did all the vocals, you know, we did all the stuff just separately, and we had to send dailies, you know, MP3s to each other to make sure that everybody was on board with what we were doing on our parts but it was really hard because yeah. usually you're in there and there's like you know you try things out you're playing you know you're playing live and and you're recording and everybody's like, well what if you play that different and what if you do this and you know and then you can get it done and you can you can get it done in like three or four weeks which this is like six months Right, because the, hey, what if you do this a little differently comes at like the end of the day, and then you have to do that the next day, and then everything Or it takes might be off. two days later, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's yeah, like pretty it's soon true. it was like... If, it, it was if, like, if like the weekend gets in the way... Oh, and... <laughs> I want to do this part! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, you know, I've talked to uh, enough uh, bands who have recorded during this time that there's a lot of variations on that. You know, some of them were fortunate enough to be able to get into the studio at the end, but a lot of them weren't. And they did kind of what you said. So you feel like it's a it's an album that would have taken a few weeks, but it actually took a few months. And uh, <laughs> I guess that just says something about everybody's dedication to actually wanting to get it done. So when you finally heard it, did it sound as though it was any different than uh, any of the albums you've done recently, you know, or does it be like, no, you know, you know, it was made differently because I've heard it a bunch of times and it, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. sound any different to me, you know? No. I mean, the thing is too, is that we got a chance to live with the songs. So by the time I went in and recorded my parts, I already pretty much knew, you know, you usually start with the basic tracks, you know, drums, bass, guitars, and we're actually going in the opposite direction. We're actually starting with vocals, guitars, and stuff like that with, with either metronomes or just drum machine, uh, you know, uh, applications. So a lot of the stuff, it was pretty easy because a lot of the stuff had these drum machine parts that were like metronomes. And I could just go in there and play my parts. But I, I had a bunch of time to live with the songs. So I really, uh, you know, I really knew what I was doing by the time I went in there and I wanted to make it sound more spontaneous. So that's what I did. I just ended up playing how I normally pay on play on stage and we got it. We got the takes, you know. How much of an obstacle was it that like is the band uh, all spread out throughout the country where it wasn't easy for like, you know, maybe two of you to get together? You know, you said you're in Mesa, yeah. Arizona. 
Uh, you know, I, everybody I, else I, on the West coast. Yeah. You know, Bay area Jack's up in, in, uh, you know, Washington. Yeah. So it was impossible. And, and the pandemic was raging. So we, uh, didn't want to, you know, mess with that whole idea of people getting sick. And so we just said, let's figure this out, you know, and it took a while for us to figure it out. But, um, once the communication got clear, you know, then we could, then we knew we could send pro tool sessions. People could embellish on the parts, send MP3s. We all got pretty good at doing pro tools and making MP3s and, getting our parts down, you know, I mean, you get to experiment too when you have the time, when there's no deadline, like, got to have it in by now, you know, this date and yeah. this date, so. Right, it's not like the old days where all of this is happening with the clock ticking on studio time, you know, the like. Right, you know, and the executives could... peering over your shoulder like, <laughs> yeah, how many more days? Yeah, you know, you, you go back far enough, nobody's letting any album take uh, take six months, you know, there's that. It, the infamous the the one guns and roses record chinese democracy that uh it took years there, there was like a new york times magazine article about how much they spent on that you know and, how about michael uh, jackson bad yeah five years you know <laughs> yeah and uh you know all michael needed to do was do an extra pepsi commercial and then he's like all right great we're we're covered now <laughs> but uh and have quincy jones go hey whenever you're ready yeah we'll do it you know yeah i know yeah it's it's a great point too because the end result is bad you know it's not one of michael's less successful albums you know it's like when when you're michael jackson and you put out one of your best albums you're like all right i guess it took five years uh <laughs> and I, I you know i i i think that uh when the end result is like oh, you spent that much time on that you could have you should have been able to yeah. do that but it's like listen guys uh you know, maybe we'll put out a couple songs, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe albums aren't the thing anymore, but uh, I, I love when, uh, you know, bands that have been around for a while still put out albums. And uh, I think uh, uh, ATBPO, I always have to say it over in my head, make sure I get it right. I have to I think do it, that too, by the way. <laughs> I think it sounds great. And uh, let's talk about the uh, first single from the album, uh, Breakout. Just uh, talk a little bit about that song. Our, our audio listeners will hear a little bit of the end of that song. Uh, we'll hear that song after the end of our conversation. Well, I mean, how that song came about, that was the last one that I recorded because it was an instrumental idea from Brad. So, um, so, and we hadn't writ written the vocal or any of the lyrics or anything like that because it was an instrumental track. We kind of put it aside. We were going to do it, but we, we wanted to wait and finish some of the songs that we already knew what we were going to, you know, that were done. So it's interesting that that one became the first single because, um, the whole idea of, of the pandemic and what it was, you know, like causing and people to you know, not, not work, not, not communicate together, not being, you know, like be together at all. So that's where that idea came from. Is I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. I gotta, I gotta somehow get away from this, you know, energy. I gotta break out, you know? So, so we wanted to kind of convey that a little bit with, with that energy. And so that's how it came about. Yeah, I think that it's interesting because, uh, you know, like uh, many bands have put out a lot of music uh, during the last year and a half. And there's uh, there's a few different ways that you're finding music that was inspired by this time. You know, there's some beautiful songs about people coming together and the world being a scary place. But then there's a lot that are like breakout is like, yeah, we've kind of had enough of this. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. So. I assume you guys and, and people can go to nightranger.com to order the album, sure. but also to find out about any shows you have coming up. Now you guys have played shows uh, lately or are they all coming up oh, yeah. in the future? Okay. I thought oh, yeah, yeah, we've been playing, playing the twos and fuse, you know, but um, uh, July had like eight or nine shows in it, which was right. great. Um, August is going to be a little more off than September when October we're playing the kiss cruise uh, right around Halloween. So that'll be great. Um, so yeah. So I mean, and even during the pandemic, we under the radar went and played Sturgis. Oh, played wow. another bike rally here in in uh, Phoenix. You know, we just didn't advertise it because everybody was like, "You can't do that." When we yeah. showed up at, at Sturgis, and there yeah. was like six hundred thousand bikes, and everybody was like, "We're here." Yeah. They were wearing masks, of course. Sure. They were protecting themselves. 
But when we played we played that show, it was like being in a Road Warrior movie. I mean, it was <laughs> it was like all bikes, dust, you know, we're playing at, you know, a thousand DB and everybody's like, yeah, you know, it, yeah. was, it you, was so science fiction. Should, it was bizarre. You should release that as a live recording of Night Ranger <laughs> Beyond Thunderdome, you know. I, oh, my God. <laughs> totally, right? Everybody yeah. flipping around. Woo! Yeah, there were uh, there were definitely bands who, uh, uh, unfortunately for those bands, made headlines for playing some shows like that. So doing it under the radar is probably the way to go. Because, <laughs> yeah, we snuck in and out, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like uh, like like the cult leaving Baltimore in the dead of night. You know, you just needed to <laughs> basically like uh, or the Dodgers, Ranger. right? Yeah. The Dodgers and. In Brooklyn. See, yeah, yeah, we're in LA now. Yeah, it's like, oh, the weather's a lot better. Yeah. So, uh, but that's great. Yeah. And, you know, there were bands that I would talk to last year. Some of them, you kind of got into the habit where and everybody's like, oh, we hope to play this year, but maybe next year or whatever. And then every once in a while, you'd talk to a band. Uh, like, I, I talked to one of the guys in Autograph, and he's like, oh, no, we played for like 3,000 people uh, outside in Colorado like a, a, a month ago. And, you know, I mean, a lot of those shows were, of course, outside at that point. But now, yeah, you're having inside shows, outside shows. I mean, uh, gosh, I hope everybody uh, turns out okay. But I saw pictures from Lollapalooza over the weekend. And, oh, my God, uh, I know. I yeah. watched it, too. Yeah, you're just like, uh, you're like, oh, that's great. I mean, I'm excited. I uh, The idea that there are shows to go to. I live in Los Angeles, and uh, most of the shows that we have scheduled are a little bit later in the summer and the, into the fall. I sure. think that uh, a lot of us who are holding tickets are still like, you know, kind of have our fingers crossed that they're really going to oh, happen. Uh, sure. But what? So you're talking about that Sturgis show. I, I feel like probably for every show you do, there's probably going to be a chunk of the audience that it's either the first show they've been to a while or they just haven't been to so many. So are you finding that? the crowds, you know, love seeing you guys, but if you just kind of got up there and tuned your instruments, they would have been like, you know what? That was a pretty good show. <laughs> they were like, just make some noise. I don't even care what it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, we talk, do a couple of jokes or whatever. Yeah. I, I, you know, it, yeah, it's just been totally, like the energy has been like at, you know, 120 yeah. levels, you know, just been like awesome. And, uh, and, and when we were playing shows last summer, too, the same thing. You know, people were just really excited about being outside. And, yeah. And, most, and, and you're right. Most of the shows we did were outside. Yeah. That we did. So we, we wanted to make sure that we were protected and other people were protected, too. Yeah, so course. the ones we accepted were outside, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the first time, I, I think it was at the end of April or the beginning of May, I, I went to a, a baseball game. And, you know, my wife and I got there early. It, the stadium was still distanced at that point. And I just remember we looked around and I was like, you know, they don't even have to play. I'm just sitting here, you know, eating a hot dog, <laughs> drinking. And it's like, it's a nice day. I'm in the shade. It's like, they don't even have to play the game. You know, I'm just, I, I got to go somewhere. And that's a great feeling. And uh, I, I've I've seen uh, I, I've seen a, a little bit of music. I've seen people playing outside, but you know the first actual like you know ticketed concert that I get to uh, should be in about a month, and uh, that'll be exciting. And, well, I uh, mean the thing is too is like during the pandemic, I had to just everybody just had to. I mean, you see people on the road; they're just driving around. Yeah, they're just outside. You know, it's like they had to. It was oh a, yeah, it was you had to get out. You yeah, I, I would. I, I have two small kids, a, a now six year old and a three year old, and uh, you know when we couldn't go anywhere, it's like we're we're gonna go take a drive. A big outing was where we'd go to the, like the drive through car wash, you know, the kind where you just actually take the car through. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's go home. That was that was our excitement for the day. That's what we're doing. And fortunately, they're little enough that they liked it. Uh, you know, you talked right. about uh, some of the performances you have coming up are at the Kiss Cruise. And uh, as as much as I love Kiss uh, and I do like Kiss a lot, I think that if I were on that cruise, I would be excited to know that it wasn't all Kiss and like Kiss tribute bands. So the idea that you guys are going to be there and there's some other bands that I recognize. You yeah, know, there. Queen's so, right. Yeah, is on there too. Um, yeah, some some so, old buddies. And so have you have you done like a you know Monster Rocks or, or one of sure. those other crews before? Yeah. So. And, and I feel like those audiences are so excited because one, they're like, they're on vacation. They're, they're on all the jammed in on yeah. one boat together. Yeah, yeah I know. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not super excited about doing cruises, but playing with Kiss has always been, that was one of our, our first tours in 1982 and 83 was we got on the uh, Creatures of the Night right. 
uh, 10th anniversary tour. So that was like, you know, like a, a, a moment for us. And so anytime we get a, a chance to play with them is, is always a, a great opportunity. Yeah, they had some incredible support on that tour, including uh, like Motley Crue during uh, Shout at the yep. Devil, you know? So it yep. was like, uh, you know, and, uh, and you know, I, I don't think it sold well at the time, but Creatures of the Night, for it, me, it it's didn't. one of my favorite albums. It, you Mine know, too. It, it, you know, and, Mine just uh the 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 you know uh as as a drummer uh i i feel like you can certainly appreciate uh we can appreciate everything that peter chris did before but eric carr was something special uh the oh, yeah. i have an old boss who used to say about good drummers uh he hit the drums like they owed him money you know <laughs> <laughs> no that's so true and that's and that and that's what that whole tour was is about getting acquainted with what they their history was and yeah and who those people are and it was just a joy watching those guys play i mean uh especially Carr, you know i mean he yeah. is a, a tremendous player great performer that drum sound probably everybody tried to get that drum sound for from that stuff i love it loud yeah nobody could touch it no nobody. absolutely yeah it's funny because the uh the first two concerts I ever went to were both in 1990. And uh, first was Alice Cooper. Eric Singer was the drummer. And then the second was Kiss. And I saw yeah. Eric Carr. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's great. You know, when you see great bands where where every, everything's firing on all cylinders. And yep. uh, I'm wondering what I meant to ask you about the live performances you're doing. Are you uh, sneaking in any of the new material? Or are you waiting till it comes out? Or, or how sure, are you approaching no. that? No, we, um, we have Breakout in the set right, right. now. And uh, the next, you know, we rehearsed uh, the second single, Bring It All Home to Me. So those, you know, I mean, it's hard to, uh, to get two songs in because yeah. we have a lot of material to play, but definitely breakouts in the set. And we're probably going to rotate that out and put in uh, Bring It All Home to Me. So, um, and then we got two other sing uh, singles we're going to release throughout the year. So. Great. Yeah. yeah, I so remember just as a to. just as a music fan, I remember uh, the one of the the best arrangements of a, a set list that that I saw was uh, Steve the Steve Miller band opened, and he did that you know seventy four to seventy eight greatest hits. He did all those songs, stuck wow. a new song right in the middle, and it was like, oh okay, cool, he's got a new album. But uh, I think a lot of people you know, you can be interested in the new song and like, you know, the diehard fans are going to be excited for it, but yep, yep. you, I guess you run the risk if, especially if you were going to do like two in a row, you know, that's what yeah. it's like. Ooh, you no, you'd never, I don't think anybody would ever do that yeah. unless you said, we're going to take out this portion of the set and play three or four of the new songs. I'd be like, uh, time to go get a beer. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, you oh, know? I think I wanted a t-shirt and a beer and a deer and, and, and a headlights. sandwich. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Because, you know, why wouldn't they be? I mean, it just makes so much sense. It's, especially when you're playing it live, you know. It's like it, sometimes, you know, venues don't sound that great. You know, you can't really decipher what's going on. So, I mean, it makes sense. Get one in, though. Yeah, no, no, I think it's good. And, and it gives you the chance to let people know that, uh, that it's out there because uh, obviously, you know, it's not like – it's not it's not like I was going to say it's not like the old days, but it's not like any of the old days. There's, you know, uh, there's channels on satellite radio who will play Night Ranger songs, but they don't play new ones, you know. Sure, uh, sure. And, uh, the, you know, if you want to find videos, you have to. I guess it's a good thing, because if you want to see a Night Ranger video, you're like, oh, I'll go to their YouTube page. That's great. Right, right. But you're not going to just find it, you know. Isn't I, I, it I, interesting that YouTube became the MTV? Yeah. That used to be back in but, the eighties. I mean, but it's also it's like it's like pay per view, except you're not paying for it. It's like it's on demand, where you're like, oh, I want to see, you know, what is this band exactly. that I look up to? The odd thing is that I, I've heard enough people talk about this: is that people are finding new music because there'll be videos playing at the gym, and a lot of it isn't yeah. rock music, but every once in a while it is, and you're like, oh, what's this? And it's because it's like the only place people are captive. You know, interesting. it's it's interesting how it's out there, but uh, I'm I'm hoping that uh, people are finding the album. And you know, we were talking about you know ordering it, and I guess there's there's an extra song that's on the the CD and the LP. Uh, so people who just stream it, they're not going to get that extra song. But there's also some different colored vinyl and all that. So yeah, blue uh, and, and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So people want that, they just go to nightranger.com. And, you know, it sounds like you've got a, a, a lot of uh, dates coming up. We mentioned the Kiss Cruise, but uh, we do, yeah. and you guys are planning on playing a lot through the end of the year and into Absolutely. next year or just. Uh... And, and next year, uh, they 
what they've done is they, uh, you know, we had to cancel the, the Sammy Hagar yeah. uh, and White Snake. So that's back on for next year. So that's what we're going to be doing. It might be Sammy Hagar and Night Ranger. It might be Sammy Hagar, White Snake and Night Ranger. They're still trying to figure that out because, uh, you know, with with the cancellations for this year, people just shuffled and tried to figure out what they were going to do. So that's yeah. that's what we're we're actually looking at that, right. uh, you know, as uh, next year's. Well, thing, I've heard David you know. Coverdale say that he does want to go out one more time, you know, because uh, I, you know he he's the one who said that uh, you know it's uh, taking a lot out of him, but he does want to go one more time. I feel like Sammy will probably tour for another twenty years if I had to oh, guess. Yeah. I know I know oh, he's God. in his seventies, but uh, <laughs> he keeps re- reinventing like new tequilas, and that must be like. <laughs> Has these jolt of vitamin B12, yeah. you know, yeah, or who, something in it. <laughs> yeah, who knew that the uh, the fountain of youth that uh, you know they were looking for was actually just in Cabo Wabo? They just needed to go there. Exactly. And they Did found you ever it. see that joke that was on the internet? It would have showed Sammy and Bill Clinton together. They're both the same age. Oh no! I didn't and they see. have pictures of it. Like one guy, one guy does, you know, he's the same age in politics, you know, and this guy does rock and roll and drinks tequila. <laughs> Who do you think worked out? You know, it was, it was unbelievable, man. Yeah. You look at it, you go, holy shit. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. You know, you know, not not a political statement at all. But when you <laughs> see people, anybody who is president, and, and even if they were only for four years, you see a picture at the beginning, a picture at the end. Oh, my God. You know, it's like it, it's like like George W. Bush looked like his own great grandfather at the end of it. You know, he looked like his dad. <laughs> I mean, you know? who would want to be in politics? Who? Would, I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. It. I don't get it. I mean, Trump. You know, he's yeah. the only guy that wants it. I'll That's do true. It. The guy, the guy who had everything. He's like, you know what? I'll, you know what? I haven't done is that. But yeah. uh, well, he hasn't. You know, he he got a chance to to be able to tell everybody what to do. <laughs> it's a great point. Not just not, the people in his business. Yeah, not just. And the he's people, really good at it. Yeah, not just the people on Celebrity <laughs> Apprentice. You know, not just Brett Michaels and De- Dennis Rodman. Well, uh, Kelly, obviously, uh, rock and roll keeps uh, Sammy Hagar young. Obviously, that's help happening for you, too. I'm so glad you guys are out there. I do Thanks love the new lot, album. I hope everybody uh, orders it. And uh, I, I hope that uh, we get to see you somewhere in Southern California soon. You know, it's uh, Absolutely. a lot of uh, a lot of I, I would say a lot of bands are are circling and kind of waiting to see wait and see how the, the stuff that's you know, because what we're getting is a lot of the stuff that was delayed from last year. And it's like sure. once we get past that, hopefully we get. Uh, and now the know, governor sure. is like saying that you got to wear masks indoors. And yeah. so if that comes about. It's going to slow things down again, yeah. you know. But what I what I've said to uh, to see a show, it's like just tell me what the rules are ahead of time. You yeah. want me to wear a mask? You want to swab my nose between every song? That's fine <laughs> if it means I get to go to a band. But I just want you to tell me, you know, just let me know ahead of time. That's that's yeah. all I ask. I know they're just guessing all the time. Isn't yeah. it? It's like constantly like changing. Like, oh no no, you're going to do this today. Yeah. Oh no no, <laughs> wait a minute. Like traveling out of the country or traveling uh, in Europe. A friend of mine just came to and from, and she said they changed it like overnight. They said, okay, now you can't, uh, we're going to check your passport. It's going to take a long time. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to do a testing on you that costs you $200 every time you di- get tested. Wow. So people trying to leave the country are getting, you know, this kidding sabotage you know? yeah no i mean and, and the interesting thing about how it changes is that you know my my wife's cousin visited from hong kong and uh two weeks later his fiance came and then they went back at the same time but while they were over here the rules changed so yeah. my wife's cousin has to quarantine for two weeks his fiance has to quarantine for one week <laughs> because of what the rules were when you left the country so uh you know it's uh it's crazy i know that I like to think that everybody who puts rules in place are, are looking out for everybody and have the best sure. interests, but boy, it would be nice if there was some consistency to it, you know? Yeah. Just tell us. To. Yeah, oh, I know exactly. I get it. Well, Kelly, uh, it's, uh, it. it's you. been great to chat with you. Uh, thanks for uh, hanging in there. Uh, everybody that's watching and listening, they missed all the, the tech adventures we had before we got started, but oh, yeah. uh, I feel that much closer to you because we went through that. <laughs> I can hear your voice and that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> uh, and the new album, ATBPO, uh, order it at nightranger.com. And while you're there, see if they're going to be in your town soon. Thanks so much, Kelly. I really appreciate it. Take care and thanks for the opportunity. I'll see Absolutely. you soon.